Welcome YouTubers and subscribers to this series of Walter Russell CSI that is cosmology, source and illusion. In this series of videos I hope to explain to you how the metaphysical pattern for motion is created, how that pattern is then projected into our universe of motion to create the illusions of matter and form, how effects like electricity, magnetism and gravity are created and finally tie all of the phenomena which we experience within our universe of motion to the one fundamental particle which is simply a loop of motion which is either compressing centripetally or expanding centrifugally. I'm using the term particle loosely here simply to refer to the fundamental unit of creation. Now if we take a basic loop of force, the significance of its location will become apparent as we develop this model. Also the significance of the rotational axis ab about which this uh, loop of force will rotate will also become clear. So if we set this loop of force into motion we can see that it has at present a very symmetrical rotational orbit around a central axis. Notice that the direction within this loop of force is universal. However, if we observe the loop of force from, in this case, the left-hand side, we will perceive a direction of clockwise motion. If we now observe exactly the same loop of force, but from the right-hand side, our perception will be that the direction is following a, an anti-clockwise direction. We can easily trace out these clockwise and anti-clockwise directions by placing pens, as shown here in the diagram, at the extremity of the loop of force. So on the left side we'll put a blue indicator and on the right side we'll put a red indicator. And what we are attempting to do now is to trace the motion as we move those pens from the rim into the central axis. A mathematician will tell, tell you that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Nature does not do straight. It's because of the rotational motion of the loop of force that a spiral is generated. So as the pens move from the rim in towards the central hub, rather than tracing a straight line, a spiral will result. Now, if we orientate this loop of force so that we are viewing it head on, we are looking at the left side and the right side equally, we can see how a clockwise motion is observed on the left side and an anti-clockwise motion is observed on the right-hand side, although the direction of the loop of force has not changed at all. Also indicated here, the indicator pens that we are going to use to trace the spiral have not moved and so therefore in this position we will in fact trace out a circle effectively around the rim of the loop of force itself. Now you can ask yourself if these indicator pens stay in this position at the rim for a minute they will trace out a certain density of ink. If the same pens or the same indicators remain in that position for a million years then the same circle will be created, although its density will be different. Now the full density of potential that collects at the rim is dependent on two major factors. Firstly, the rate at which the loop of force is rotating. If it's rotating once every minute, or a million times every minute, makes a huge difference to the density of the potential on the rim but also the duration at which the indicators, in this case the pens or the sharpies, stay at the zero position. So if they stay there for a minute or a million years also affects the accumulated potential at the cathode rim of the loop of potential. Now I will come back to the nature of these pens or sharpies, what they are, or more importantly who they are. It's also important now 
to realize that the potential does not stay at the rim. It wants to move in close to the central shaft and will do so, as we said earlier, in a centripetal spiral. As the Sharpie moves away from the rim, closer to the central shaft, it will follow a spiral path. It will arrive then at the plus one condition where it will pause momentarily, and that moment could be a million years, at the plus one position. If the rate of rotation of the loop of force is very high, say a million revolutions per minute, then the path that we will observe between the zero and the plus one condition will in fact be a very noticeable visible spiral. If however the loop of force is only rotating at one revolution per minute, then we will not see the full geometry of the spiral. However, it will still follow the curved path. And so you need to keep in mind that there is a characteristic which will may become important later on of how dense the lines of spiral lines of force that exist between the zero and the plus one condition. That line density is directly related to the rate at which the loop of force is rotating, as well as its desire to stay at any particular point along its path from the rim to the central hub.